reclaimed and rebuilt. Looking at Ezekiel chapter 22, it's a heavy chapter. I'm just warning you. Chapter 22 is heavy. And uh, therefore, I've condensed heaviness because my heart is not heavy today. And because I want to put it in context and the way that God works, and I'm going to share just a little bit from God's Word, from Ezekiel, and then I'm going to do what pastors are notoriously known to do. We're going to connect the biblical dot. In other words, we're going to grab this passage, connect it with this one, and connect it with this one. And sometimes I get annoyed when I go visit a church and I listen to a sermon because all I feel like is they read this scripture, read that scripture, read this scripture, and they sit down. And I'm like, what did you do? Anyone with a concordance can do that. The point is that this passage should be connected to this passage, connected to this passage, which brings it into a fuller account and understanding that we understand what God is doing in a more full way, in a more complete way. So I'm condensing Ezekiel, and then I'm bringing you on the boat on my wedding yesterday, and then I'm going to take you back to Bible study on Thursday. We're going to connect dot because my brain is there, so you're going to have to figure it out. Live with me for a minute. Welcome to the squirrel's brain, okay? Okay. And we're going on this whole idea of Christianity. And people bring Christianity down as a world religion, as a way of humanity understanding God, and it's a list of rules. And what we're trying to do this month is to make sure that it's not just rules. It's not just customs. It's not just rituals. It is a relationship with a living God that is supposed to be teaching us principles and filling us with the Spirit and causing us to be vibrant, authentic people in this world. So authentic that it shocks people. It's so authentic that it melts people who who have been frozen. So authentic that it goes to, and reaches out in places and in relationships that people didn't have the tenacity or the audacity to go before. And by the way, that's what this scripture in Ezekiel is talking about. Standing in the gap between this person and that person, between right and wrong, and making religion real and making it right and making it holy. Reducing Ezekiel, I was going to do 17. And if you read chapter 23, you better be an adult because it's just off the chart, the things that are being said there. And I'm not encouraging you to read it because of that, but because it's so shocking how upset God is in the beginning of this chapter, the chapter before the chapter. God is upset at the people in this world because People are not knowing the living, holy God, and they're making decisions to be crazy, to be irreverent, to defile themselves. And it, reducing all that down to this, and God is saying, this is a mess, this is a mess, and I am looking for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for somebody to stand in the gap, in the wall, so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. Do you know how heavy that is? That it's so messed up that the only way to deal with it is to destroy it and build it again. That's how upset God is. But I found no one. Again, heavy. So now I will pour out my fury on them, consuming them with fire of my anger, and I will heap on their heads the full penalty of all their sins. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to the Good News First Baptist Church. 
God's mad and he's going to burn us down. That's heavy. It's overwhelming. And we live in a world that's at times if we look with our eyes and we feel with our hearts and we think with our common sense that the world needs help. And what God is saying is I need you. Not the person next to you. Not your third cousin on the fourth side. I need you to stand in the gap. This was the message I heard Billy Graham deliver at Urbana back in 1984 when I walked like everyone else up forward and said, here I am, Lord, send me. It was crazy cold. It was freezing. And I heard that message and I wandered around Urbana. I don't even know where I was. Walking around outdoors all night. Didn't come back in until around two or three in the morning because I was messed up in my heart because I did not want to stand in the gap. I did not want to do what God, but he said, do it. And when God says, do it, you do it. All right, I'm going to be happy now. I'm going to go to the boat. Yesterday, I had the most amazing opportunity to perform my daughter's wedding. It's weird, by the way. When you're up front, say, who gives... This woman, I'm standing up front. She's here. So Louis says, her father and I. (laughs) Because I'm up front, and so we did it together. Come on. I'm going to read this scripture that we used. Have you ever been at a wedding that they use this? If you don't raise your hand, I don't believe you. Everybody, I said, so I'm going to start with the obvious. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love, first of all, this is amazing. Because this is read at weddings and saying, because you're getting married, you need to know what the textbook definition of love is, okay? It's patient, it's kind, not jealous, not boastful, not proud or rude. Keep thinking about this. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. Are they truly married? This is saying love. This is what love is. This is what God demands. This is what God hopes for. This is what God wants to build. This is what God needs in this world. And we say this to a man and a woman as they're pledging their mutual love to each other in the company of family. And before God, patient, kind, not jealous, not boastful, not proud, not rude, doesn't ask for its own way, is not irritable, doesn't keep a list of wrongs, does not get all happy when something bad happens, and it never gives up, and it never loses faith, and it's always hopeful. Don't you know how difficult those words always, never, Not. This is impossible. True? Come on. Don't look at your spouse. Look at me. Have you ever been irritable? We're not talking about your bowels here. Have you ever been irritable? Have you ever remembered the wrong of the other person? Do do you see what this, this is really heavy on a wedding day? Oh, I don't keep a record of wrong, but on March 7th, you wronged me. Always patient, always kind. No, after you. No, please. That last donut really didn't have my name on it. It's heavy. But God has such a high level of expectation. And we cannot just say, a la peanut butter sandwich at a wedding, and all of a sudden, somebody now is miraculously filled with the ability never to be impatient, never to be unjust, never to be irritable. It doesn't happen. 
It doesn't happen by just saying magical words. It happens because we commit to one another and God. And God is the one who's going to work in us. And God's going to work through us. And God's going to make it possible so that we don't have to destroy the world so that God can rebuild it. So that we don't have to destroy relationships. So we don't have homes that are broken, that families are disrupted, so that things can work the way God wants. And we need men, and we need women, and we need children, and we need church people, we need mothers and fathers to stand in the gap. Okay, so far we went to Ezekiel, which is today's sermon text. That was yesterday's message, part of it. Oh, by the way, that's my daughter, Emily. Come on. And I helped eat that cake. And some of it's still in my refrigerator. And this girl... I remember the very first day I met her in an orphanage. And right there, as you walk in the door, they have all their slippers. And they have all their toothbrushes with their names. And at that time, she called me Daddy Richard. Daddy Richard, I want McDonald's. You know what I just said? I want McDonald's. I want McDonald's. You remember in Russian, you sneeze? And you say, I want something. So how many times did I go to McDonald's? <laughs> yep. And I would go downtown and I would buy her a zonchik, which is a little tiny cute pink umbrella. She'd bring it back to the orphanage and next time I'd see her, it was gone. I'd buy her a watch, bring her back to the orphanage. Next time I see her, it's gone. Because that's the life that she had and her brother had. And I can tell you, my heart was crushed with joy yesterday. So overwhelmed. To stand there and watch a girl who had no mom and dad. By the way, she was, I joke with people, that she was born 790 kilometers from Chernobyl. And I bring her to Three Mile Island, because that's where we live close to in Pennsylvania. Bad father, by the way. Making sure that she has that glow about her. That you, you know, I've joked about this before. But she was far away. And she became part of a family. And I'm showing you the beautiful, happy moment. Do you realize that any home that's real has messy moments? Do you realize that? There's been times that she's run away. There's times that, gosh, the very first time we're going in Poland, going to get the adoption papers, and she comes, she touches my stomach and asks me if, if I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> that's just not the way you begin a relationship. I was just like, that's just wrong. I'm still going to adopt you, but that's just not good. But to get to a point like this, to celebrate. And it wasn't an easy day yesterday. People were, who asked got the fuller version, I wasn't even sure if she was going to be. We, by the way, we had her wedding on the Pride of the Susquehanna, which is a river boat going up the Susquehanna River outside of Harrisburg. And she was so upset with her sister about this, another sister about that, and just emotions. But I wasn't even sure she was going to be on the boat when I got there. But she did. And that's exactly how God works. God continues to hold us, our feet on the ground, and cause us to trust Him even through all of these things. And this is the scripture we had on Thursday. This is my command, be strong and courageous. In fact, it says it in verse 6, verse 7, Verse 9, be strong and courageous. It says it three times. 
in order to stand in the gap, in order to do what God wants, we have to be strong. We have to be crazy courageous, not to be afraid or discouraged. Which one are you more often? Are you strong and courageous or afraid and discouraged? Survey says. What does it say? I spend a lot of time afraid and discouraged until I remember that God tells me to be strong and courageous. And the reason I can be strong and courageous is God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Wherever you go. And my daughter is going away. She's now in a new home. She's with her husband. They're going to live a life. And we're going to buy them a plaque and they lived happily ever after. Amen. Amen. And we want happily ever after on everybody's story. In order so that we can make sure that happens, we are called by God to stand in the gap. For somebody. If you're a father, that means being strong and courageous for your wife, for your children, for your faith. It's not just this daughter. I saw my other daughters there, and they've been through a lot. I know when I was younger, I used to hold missionaries up on a pedestal. I'm going to tell you what, I hold missionary children up on a pedestal. Do you understand how hard it is to leave Nana and Pop Pop? They're friends. I remember that when we first told our daughter and we went away, she's underneath the restaurant and the table, kicking me in the shin, saying, I don't want to move away from my home. These shins are sore to this day. And she's mad. And to go to Detsky Sad and spend six months... And the kids next to you thinking that they are not connected because they don't speak the language. And then they come home speaking another language and the kids here going, you're a liar. You never lived anyplace else. It's not easy for a lot of people. And if we're going to reach the world for Christ, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, it means you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. A ton. You're going to stand in the gap. And it's overwhelming. Thank you for taking the VBS. Thank you for helping our kids go on a mission trip. Thank you for barbecuing and flea marketing. It's now a verb. Because it's important that we continue to reach out and trust God for things. And I'm standing there yesterday at the end of the riverboat, the very back, right Below me are the paddles. We're standing, we're just parked in the middle of the river. And in the very front row, my granddaughter Genevieve, she kept trying to break loose and come run up to Pop Pop, who was, she had no idea why I got to be the king of the boat. Why does he get to be the king? Standing up there. She wanted to come jump in my arms. And then little Evander trying to poke his his other cousin. All this is going on, and that's what life is. It's filled with wiggling and wanting and people who are disconnected. And families, the reason I mention families, not just because it's Father's Day, because if you want to stand in the gap, you're not standing in the gap for anything other than people. Because God's economy is all about people. It's all about relationships. It's all about reaching out, holding on, building up, and pulling somebody out of the gap and into relationship with a living God. And that's what we're called to do. And it's hard work. And I will speak, and then I will translate. Вчера был такая чудесный день. Я очень благодарный в Господе за этого. 
Yesterday was the most miraculous, amazing day in my life because God is able to do miracles. He's able to take children who have been damaged by being missionaries. Do you understand that? I'm being honest with you. Kids, my daughter watched somebody get blown away in downtown Moscow. My kids struggling to be accepted. And it's heavy to jump in that gap. I mean heavy. And I am shaken today by it. And my kids stepped in that gap. And your families do the same thing. When you're dealing with VBS, you're dealing with people from everywhere. When you're dealing with people that you work with, you're dealing with people that need you to stand in the gap. And you need, you must, it is required. God commands it that, right here, my command. It's not a recommendation. It is a command that you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Because God is with you. Not because all of a sudden you figured it out. Not all of a sudden you decided to do it. Because God is with you and God will help you. God will make you stand in that gap. And I wept. Not yesterday. I just smiled. I just had the silliest smile on my face all day long. In fact, I was on the dance floor, literally breaking moves. I had my 10-year-old. I don't know why every song seemed like it was thriller to him. He was doing this move, I don't know, whatever that thing is, you know. And I was like, all right, we're doing this. So we're out there on the dance floor, and then all the little grandchildren think it's like, Froggy, frogger game and they're running between us or it was insane so when you stand in the gap it's not all bad because when you see the result that people find joy people are now in family people are in relation people can be changed and transformed it is worth it and that's what God wants for you to remember that God is with us wherever we go. Graduates, parents, God, if He is with us, who can be against us? And by the way, that's a trick if. Do you think God is not? If. It is definite that God is there. It's not, it sounds conditional if it's an if then clause if God is there God can do it and we know God is with us because God is with you wherever you go so if God is with you all things are possible all things should be expected and we have so many family dynamics because of some of the stories I let loose today that I was Blown away that it worked perfectly yesterday. I'm driving home, and it's 11 o'clock last night, and I told Louise, I said, I have gone through 100 to 200 scenarios of how this day was going to play out, and not one ended well. And yet, everything was amazing. Even the cake. All three pieces. The flowers are perfect. The music was perfect. My children. Wow. And you know what? When you're standing in the gap and you're getting your face crushed, when you're, when you're a parent, when you're a child, when you're a child of God and you feel, what does it say here? Uh oh, I must have changed it. Oops. You change it. Thank you. When you feel afraid or discouraged, you know why that happens? Because you forget God. Not the other way around. God never forgets you. But we forget that there's something beyond just us. We're saying, oh, this isn't going to happen. But when God shows up, there's that one scenario that you can't control happens. And yesterday I had a chudesnaya, which means like a miraculous day. 
Come on, smile with me. Miraculous. Because it went beyond how everybody was feeling. And God showed up and God melted hearts. One hour before that wedding, everything was sideways. And it was just like, you've seen those days where there are clouds. The sun shows up, the clouds melt away, and there's a rainbow somewhere. And that was yesterday. And I'm telling you, when you stand in the gap, God will do amazing things. Amen? And I'm sorry if I'm telling you too much, but that's where my heart is. So would you bow with me? God, we know. Lord, beyond a doubt, beyond the limits of our ability to think or trust or to even imagine, Lord, that you are out there way ahead of us, long before we can imagine it, long before we can, oh, Lord, breathe. Lord, you have it all figured out. And Lord, we thank you that wherever we go, and especially when we stand in the gap, that you are there with us and that we're not alone and we are not without the ability to have strength and courage because, Lord, you bring it in abundance. And even though our bucket leaks, you fill it and cause it to overflow because you are that good, you are that strong, you are that tenacious of a lover of our souls that no one will be let go. So, Lord, help us to reach out and grab hold of people and trust them for your name and for your kingdom and for your glory. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.